Thank you so much for attending my presentation on how one move changed Glamora, and first off let's talk about Glamora before getting this move. Pre-DLC2 VGC Glamora was fine. It has some pretty solid stats all around with a fantastic 130 special attack, but that's not the main draw. Toxic Debris, an ability that drops toxic spikes when hit by a physical move, is very powerful. Since you can almost guarantee this with the type combination strong against special threats Fluttermane and Shiyu, Glamora saw some usage. It was really good on Don Dozo teams, which already tended to take a while and could really benefit from the chip damage the poison provides. This was the only quote-unquote stall archetype in early Scarlet and Violet VGC, although games still didn't last too long. It's doubles after all. With Reg C, and especially Reg D ratcheting up the power level, Glim Dozo fell off and became a pretty rare sight in tournaments. So what did Glamora get that made us so good? Meteor Beam is one of the most interesting moves in the game. It's a two-turn attack which can absolutely turn some people off, but it has an amazing effect giving the user a special attack boost before going off. With the staggering 120 base power coming off of that aforementioned special attack stat, this deals a fuck ton of damage. One of Glamora's biggest weaknesses in VGC is that it's a bit too passive. Since it kinda has to play a defensive role on Don Dozo teams, they didn't focus on damage and thus from providing a lot of value each game, but with Meteor Beam in its back pocket, Glim can threaten fantastic damage while passively setting hazards. The plus one special attack boost gives the rest of its moves even more firepower as well, and with coverage like Sled Bomb and Energy Ball, it can hit a lot of meta threats for super effective damage. It has to run Power Herb in order to complete the move quickly, but the payoff is so strong it's worth the sacrifice. After gaining this one move, Glamour came back in full force, but this time it was more viable on hyper offense teams. Invested plus one Meteor Beam is absurd, and can threaten knockouts against even bulky neutral targets like Ndidi. Its most prevalent build is especially dangerous alongside Chi Yu. Chi Yu plus Fluttermane has been an extremely strong offensive core since they were legalized largely due to the former speeds of ruined ability, effectively enhancing its partner's special attack. This obviously has amazing synergy with Glamora, who can abuse this to even pick up Okos against Amoongus, one of the best defensive Pokemon around. Glamora hasn't won a regional in Regulation F yet, but it's a mainstay in top baits appearing in every single one so far. Surprisingly, it can still be run on Don Dozo teams that jump across getting second to Portland with the Power Herb Meteor Beam set. And since I don't think I'll be doing another video about Glamora, let's talk about it in singles. It's always been pretty solid as a suicide lead with access to Stealth Rock and Toxic Debris. If it ends up surviving, it can fish for damage or even get rid of hazards while poisoning the opponent with Mortal Spin. With a Focus Sash, it tends to run max speed, max special attack in order to deal as much damage as possible on the way out. It can run Meteor Beam, but it's not that common. The utility the consistent hazards provided is too strong to pass up, especially for HO teams. Glamour has been an OU staple since release, and even as a solid role in Ubers, once again is a dedicated lead. In fact, it's useful in a lot of different formats, from monotype to battle stadium singles to anything goes. In conclusion, while Glamour was okay in VGC before, getting access to Meteor Beam let it shine on hyper offense teams and plays well at tournaments around the world. It's also pretty solid in singles with a set of traits to make it viable in almost any format you could think of. Thank you so much for watching.